I remember shooting one time and I came to full draw and just like opened myself up too much and whatever that was, tweaked my shoulder and it came out of the socket while I'm holding the bow. Yeah. And so everything lurched forward. The arrow, like I fired, I don't know, just in that process, the, the trigger on the release tripped. Yeah. I don't know where the arrow went, but had I been on a range with other people around and, and maybe yeah. there was someone down range, I don't know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. This is Tim Chelswick. This is Matt Drury, and we have a bullshit episode. We do, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we're powered by DeerCast, so and that, the BS is going to be supercharged. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going to dive into today. So if you, we, we've talked about it briefly on previous podcasts, but there is a new version of the app that um, the team's been working on for, shoot, I don't know, eight, nine months probably yeah. in the background, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, it's a it's a total rewrite from the back end to make it like to help us iterate features faster. So while it looks different right now and performs more stably, especially in low service areas, what people are going to notice going for, like make sure that you guys keep your DeerCast apps updated because what you'll find is that there are more goodies coming faster more frequently than we've ever we've ever experienced in the past yeah so the whole point in think about it like a house so okay. the, the foundation the footers they were maybe starting to crack a little bit after some wear and tear and you know we were just continuing to build on top and build additions and we hey more, we more, need more. A, a third car garage and then we added a patio <laughs> out back and all of a sudden it just wasn't probably optimized on the, the the footers and the foundation weren't optimized to be able to handle the stress and the load of everything we were doing with it right is yeah, that a good well, yeah, analogy um i hate to say it yes because <laughs> it, it <laughs> it i said it <laughs> yeah a little bit um because the technology moves so quickly yeah it's not only the technology and what's capable but it's also the security standards yeah. that's always an arms race between the bad guys and the developers you know what we can build that is safe and secure and keeps people's data and safe. the other thing to keep in mind i i know that some of the audience some of the people that use DeerCast, they get annoyed when it's like, hey, my phone no longer works. The app no longer works on my phone, but the phone's, you know, four years old or, or whatever. And it's a little bit out of our control. So the way that works is the app stores, they dictate what you have to do within your app to stay to even stay on their app stores to be relevant and continue to have updates. Like they mm -hmm. force you to update for security reasons. And there's a lot of other technical APIs and all kinds of other things that, that you got to do to stay up to date. And the long and short of it is it's kind of out of our control. If we don't stay compliant, then all of a sudden the app never you, updates. You get kicked out of the app store yeah. <laughs> and then you're just not there. And then another layer to that, it, that there are governmental regulations mm -hmm. that, uh, that not only we have to comply with but also the app stores so i know it can be frustrating especially if you're someone that doesn't want to spend money on on a new phone um you know every five or so years but that's just kind of the nature of the mobile app world and it's general. not just DeerCast; it'd be any app you know that's true and the nice thing is that's partially why we came up with the DeerCast desktop version way back in the day. So no matter what operating system people are on, they can always log into a browser. On your phone, if on, you want. On your phone yeah. or a laptop or iPad or whatever and go to go to DeerCast. Yeah, just sign in. So, mm -hmm. you know, all that being said, um, let's dive into some of the new things that DeerCast, uh, you can do a DeerCast. And I'm really excited because in, in the background, you know, we're, we're working on things with the team that's going to be really, you know, that you hopefully will launch in September, launch some new stuff in October, like new features. So right out of the gate, as you look at it, the biggest thing is it's a different look and feel. There's a, a, a few different things that you'll have to get used to in the newsfeed, over mm -hmm. in mapping the the tool selector and the layer section. It's a it's a little bit different, but it's been changed to make it to where we could start adding on a lot more stuff and features down the road here, right? Yes. And so when you log in, first off, you'll notice like the cool hex screen animation that moves around and and highlights and stuff like ultimately we want deercast to reflect the drury outdoors dna that built and designed it from the very beginning 
So that's a little homage to the, the, the DeerCast hacks. But then when you load the homepage, you see a map. And that's that's a, a really different, a big difference from the previous homepage. And the, the news feed is still there. It's just a little further down, you know, so you just scroll a little bit down and there's the same old news feed that we always had. Mm -hmm. um, it, it um, you can share the, the articles and share content out of there a lot easier now. Um, you can go ahead and post, you know, a lot easier. We're making sure that uh, if you have videos that you need to upload or uh, pictures or anything that you want to upload to your own account and have a fan share, all those things are going to work better and, and be a little bit smoother going forward, right? 100%. Yep. And again, as in the version one of DeerCast, those... Um, those um, the, the tactic breakdowns that Mark and Terry filmed and the uh, the explanations for the factors that go into your deer cast are still a little bit hidden. So if you tap the hourly tab on your deer cast forecast, scroll down a little bit, you'll see that carrot button that says understand your deer cast. Yeah. And those are the like the phase tactic videos are so powerful and so informational. I really suggest people go through and watch those. But then as you scroll through your DeerCast forecast, like V1, it's ordering those factors by priority of what's uh, what's influencing your DeerCast forecast yeah. at that time. Um, so if you go back to the, the main page there, you're on daily, you could see kind of the out, outlook of, of the main factors for the day. That map's right below it. You click on the map. So first of all, your location, if you're up in the top left in your location, you know, say uh, you have current location set, there's a little carrot drop down. You click the carrot. That's where you set new locations. Here's the very first thing I would tell people. What I went and done, so if you hit edit, the, the only thing currently that you could do with edit is change like the... Um, the name of it and, you know, your dear cast custom or, or things like that. What I actually went and done is I deleted my locations and I went back and I selected them because now you can choose them on the map. Mm -hmm. So the reason I say that is currently or previous version, you would just type in the nearest location like, hey, uh, Ellsbury is the nearest town. Well, that's really... 10 minutes away from my farm, but that's the nearest town that I was Close, getting the forecast. Precise. So now you can actually go in and set a new location and choose the map to find your location. And the reason why that's important for several reasons. One, you're probably going to get a little bit closer of a, a forecast prediction, which helps your deer cast prediction. Mm -hmm. But the other reason, looking at the map inset on that home feed you will start seeing whatever location that you have selected, you'll see all your your waypoints and your you know your map uh, icons that you have selected or that you have on your map. Yeah, and if you have your your uh, DeerCast set to current location, it will just show where you are on the map. So if you're traveling, you're not gonna see your waypoints, you're just gonna see yeah. where you currently are, where you open the map. And then I'll say in 4.0.2, you'll be able to add location by latitude and longitude. Nice. So once you click the map in the home page, it just takes you to that location that you had pre-selected. It takes you right to it uh, and opens up the map section. I will say it takes a, a second or two for the waypoints to load. So don't think that your waypoints aren't there. Waypoints by default, just like the old version, are always selected on. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a layer that you can turn off, but it by default is selected on. But it will take a second or so for all those to load up. So just be patient. But once they load up, what I think people will notice is how much smoother the map functionality is. So so when you're zooming, it doesn't, you don't see any caching. You don't see any white screens on the side while it's loading. Like it's instantaneous. The yeah. other cool thing is you can, by doing, by taking um, your index finger and your middle finger and moving them up or down at the same time, you can actually rotate the map almost on a horizon <laughs> view, uh -huh. which took me a minute to get used to, but it's actually pretty nice. And then you can actually rotate the map any, any way, any direction you want. <laughs> which, which is something we talked about forever. For, forever. Yeah. We finally got it. And if you want to go back to true north, there's a compass on the top, right? You just click the compass and it'll take you back to true north. So um, it's... I, 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 I really like the map more than anything has been a big improvement. And then as people will see, if you go down to the map layers, there's several other map 
options in there. Yeah. Um, and there's only going to be more. You're working on some some additional map layers that mm -hmm. are going to get fed into there. Yep. Yeah. So so that's part of the rewrite is that it, this allows us to put more into the app and maybe even put things in seasonally. Like maybe you guys want to see something for only a short period of time during the year. We can pop it in and then pop it back out. Also, in, in the newest version, 4.0.2, um, if you tap the center on location button, uh, so it's just below the compass button on your map, it will bump you into compass navigation mode. So you'll see a compass that's at the bottom of the screen that, oh. re that reflects in real time based on the direction that your phone is. So if you're navigating out in the, out in the timber, you can use that navigation mode. That's pretty slick. Now, sometimes uh, whenever you access a compass feature on a smartphone, sometimes there's a brief calibration uh, minute that the device needs to get its bearings. And you can literally like make the infinity symbol with your phone and that helps orient the magnetic compass inside to give you the most accurate. The result. other thing to note, and I learned this through Leupold for that rangefinder they have that will send waypoints to your app, which we're working on to, to have that yep. uh, probably mid to late September, probably late September, maybe not to put you on the spot, but <laughs> we'll see. But we'll see. <laughs> um, but, but anyways, one thing I learned with that rangefinder is if so, I have a binocular harness that has a magnet flap on it, right? And they say that that magnet in the flap will screw up the orientation on the rangefinder. I assume that would be the similar case for your phone, right? I I, I don't know. There's different kind of shielding that they yeah. that they put in uh, in iPhone or in, uh, sure. in mobile phones. That's that's different. Um, Might be worth noting. It could be an issue. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, there are different map types for sure. And that allows you to kind of dial in recency or resolution and, uh, and then more to come. But my, my favorite still is that Google satellite, which is the default. It's, it's really clean. And if you, you know, if you're within a decent range of a, um, kind of a major metropolitan, metropolitan. area it, that just google better. updates it yeah. all the time so mm -hmm. for what it's worth um that's that's my favorite but we're working on public land you know have a public lands identified which is something that we've always wanted to have so. yeah which will be an overlay that you can a, a layer essentially that you can toggle on or off yeah so a lot, lot of a lot of neat things in there we did separate as when we were speaking of layers we did separate food plots from area measurements so i think folks that have used DeerCast in the past that's one that was always one area that was frustrating for us internally but just kind of by the way it was originally built we were kind of handcuffed with it mm -hmm. and so by default originally say you outlined your entire farm and that was your area measurement but then you had food plots inside there you wanted to outline. So the way it worked is food plots was always by default the top, top. layer. So if you clicked it, it would it would show you the measurements for that. Well, now it's two separate layers totally. So mm -hmm. you could go in and create a food plot on your farm. And you could go in and create an area measurement on your farm and have those layers on or off totally separate of each other. So that's, a, I think, a nice improvement. Yeah, yeah, really trying to give hunters the ability to dial in exactly the information that they want to see. Yeah, so um, other than that, I mean, the layers, you know, uh, other than being in a kind of a little bit of a different spot, you know, and you're getting used to seeing them in a different spot, all the same awesome features are there as far as like food, uh, as far as like parcel data, which has improved dramatically the, the load times on their on them are, are almost, almost mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that was an area that was frustrating in the past but now boom you click it and it it pulls right up um of course rain stations are still there and radars improved and all kinds of great stuff paths i feel like have improved a little bit we did um we we are working on something currently so that when you're on a path tracker um and, and you know say you're gonna trail trail a, a blood trail you know come October. And in the past, you could drop waypoints along the way. We did lose that just for a little bit. We're getting it back here soon. It's coming so, back, baby. Yeah, it's something mm -hmm. that we're working on. But in general, Path Tracker is, it works better. It really um, follows you, you know, really, really closely. I, I think it works well. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the whole thing with the app is that you, we don't want you to have to think about it when you're, because when you're hunting 
or you're doing your land management, you've got other stuff on your mind. So we really try to make this stuff just work, work simply, work cleanly. Um, and, and to that end, like if, if you're hunting in a blind or if you're at dawn or dusk, you can toggle a light or dark theme for deer cast, which is, which is really helpful. Uh, that's in the settings that will be in the settings menu with 4.0.2. So it's nice to be able to so, jump in and change. So that. currently if you downloaded the new version of the app, if you, before he, he keeps mentioning 4.0.2, this airs, you know, a day after we're filming it here. So it may not be out just yet, but it's any day now. Yep, yep. So in the meantime, if you have this um, just 4.0, the new version or 4.0.1. Yeah, which I would recommend because it fixes a few of the bugs. You can switch your phone's mode to dark or light mode, or at least on the iPhone. I'm not sure on Android how Android's that Android's the same. Yeah, that, and, that's an operating system level okay. change. And, and it, will, it will change it on deer cast mm -hmm. it will match up with whatever the system is yep. but what tim's saying is in this new version getting ready to launch this new update it's actually in settings so you go to the settings mode and go all the way to the bottom and it says theme and you can change it. it's it's by default probably sys set at system which is whatever your system the phone set at yep. but then say you you like your phone in dark mode but you want deer cast in light you can switch it and, and do whatever you need and there we're so working, it's, it's nice we're working on a new mode called tim chelsvik mode it doesn't work and you your, don't see any deer your deer cast is always poor <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice we're gonna see how many people use that so i mean we we kind of flew through a lot of this but i i'm you know i know this is an audio platform it's by and large so it's it's hard for probably people to follow along unless they pulled out their phone and are actually moving through this with us. But yeah. in general, we did want to spend a quick, take a quick podcast right as the season's really heating, you know, starting to heat up both temperature wise. And as we get closer to the season it's stupid and, hot. and yeah. take everybody through this because it is a nice update and I would highly recommend it. The only thing is some people have had an issue when they've updated it, logging in the first logging back in because it'll log you out right mm -hmm. so what do you recommend there well with 4.0.2 that is resolved okay uh but if that happens with someone just do the reset password flow and it'll get you right so back. so forgot in. password mm -hmm. you go to the sign in forgot password and it'll get you right back yep. in yeah so but hopefully we have 4.0.2 out there in the wild and no one has to worry about that yeah I, i'll also tease like and i said this before the number one most requested feature uh, that we've had since day one is coming. We're working on it. We just had weeks. a meeting with Mark and Terry last week uh, about it and showed them, you know, kind of a um, you know, close version of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And they really liked it. They really thought it was pr pretty awesome, frankly. And so hopefully that'll be a mid-season kind of a launch. We need to do a little more testing on it. Yeah, yeah, very excited about that coming. But so, uh, you mentioned the heat. I'm <laughs> at some point today. I need to go out and drop some lime and some fertilizer yeah. on a new plot. And I was out a couple nights ago with my buddy Tony. I've, I've got a really nice 10 point coming through pretty regular on a new spot. I, I'm calling it Buck Valley. It's one of those places where it's near the Merrimack River. It's a property that you could probably hang glide off of <laughs> the top of it. Yeah. It's so steep to get down in the bottom, but deer travel this thing. That's interesting. So you, you're going to make the track down to the bottom. So it's the it's basically the river bottom, right? Is it's it's, a, like it's a, an uh, intermittent creek okay. that feeds into the river. Okay. Um, and, and I can say the, the previous homeowner must have been a deer hunter because he left a target out in the backyard. Well, the back slope, I should say. And he ran, I don't know, it's probably 200 yards from the house back down to the bottom of the valley. He ran garden hose. Oh, from the top, and at first, well, the, the first time I was out there, I was scouting it during turkey season, and I was like, what is this hose coming from the house for? And it's like connected to a bunch of different hoses that all you know go down. And I got to the bottom of the hill, or the bottom of the valley, there's a pile of sprinkler heads nice. down there. There's a blaze orange vest and a bucket like <laughs> in a pile uh, off to the corner. There's an old tree stand with spikes still yeah. in the tree. And in I was like, spot. this guy was trying to put a food plot in yeah. down here 
it gave up on it like a yeah. like a miner quitting a claim or something. Yeah. Um, but it, but I could see like I could see his vision. So there's gold in there. <laughs> well, there's a ten pointer, and then my buddy's saying he's seeing a monster buck walking around. It's like it's a very secluded neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and he said that. I, I told him, I was like, so what's your what's your neighbor like? Like, are they going to be okay with me retrieving a deer if I shoot it? He's like, oh, yeah, he'd be, Mike's good. He'd, he'd be fine. No big deal. Um, and I said, well, what do you think about asking him if I can hunt, hunt <laughs> over on his side too? Well, he posed the question and the guy said, I'm okay with it, but my wife is a tree hugger. I don't <laughs> think she'll be good with it. So retrieve all the deer you want, but I don't think hunting will work out. Yeah, that's fine. Well, so Tony and I went down and did all the work and Tony's like got his uh, commercial grade leaf blower and it's 90 some degrees. We're sw- like, there's just a cloud of like pig pen. There's a cloud of dust down here in this, this valley. And, uh, and I'm up in a tree putting a stand up. We're just nasty and finally come up around 830 or nine o'clock. We, we spent probably four or five hours down there. I put a new, um, a new camera down there too. But my, my buddy came out and he was like, Hey, good news. I just talked with my neighbor, his wife, when she found out that you eat the deer that you shoot, well. <laughs> she was fine with you hunting oh, their piece. Awesome. So that's, that's great news, but it also just reinforced the stereotypes that so many people must have because we, we, I, I could tell like you were kind of surprised like, Oh, duh, of course we're going to eat the deer. Yeah. But not, not most everyone people thinks that. Like just not most people. Some people think you just shoot them and leave them, <laughs> yes. which is astonishing to me yes. that they think that. Uh, yeah. And a surprising number of, of people do think that. Yeah. Um, so I, my five acre piece just went to a 10 acre piece and this guy's property is more of a funnel in this creek bottom. So I haven't spent too much time Good over that spot. Maybe it, there's definitely going to be a lot of traveling through yeah. there for sure. So yeah, awesome. a little bit of good news that kind yeah. of balances out the other, like the poop, the pants pooping <laughs> property that I thought I was going to get to that. I went through that five hour safety course on Didn't get it. It's not looking so good right now. <laughs> At least you're educated. <laughs> the mutual friend is, um, is not really interested in going out and doing any kind of pre work on the property. Um, He's just, he's really a fair weather deer hunter, just not interested in yeah. going out. He just likes to go out and see if he sees something and maybe. He's going to go sit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which again is instructive for me that hunting, hunters are on a continuum. It's not like we're at one particular spectrum. Yeah. I kind of got a dose of that. I've been trying to go to a local um, archery range to get ready for my elk hunt. I can shoot a little further at this range than I can shoot at my house. Yeah. And, um, and as we're getting closer to season, it's getting a lot more crowded and, and I'm getting a good dose of like, when you go there, there might be a guy shooting a trad bow. There might be, two crossbow guys, a father and a son, you know, there might be a young, um, young kid that's that somebody's teaching how to just shoot in general, you know, for the first time, it's a wide, wide range. And then, you know, those are all the 10, 20, 30 lanes. And then down at the 40 and the 50 lane, it's usually a guy with a Matthews or a, you know, a nice bow, like kind of all tricked out. And you could tell like there's, it's interesting to look at it because it's almost a snapshot of what hunters, the the different types of hunters out there. The guy with a price tag still hanging off his bow. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it, 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 it's nice to see it, but man, it can be tough. I'm just not used to shooting with shooting at ranges. I'm used to going down my mom and dad's or a property or whatever. Is, is it a county yeah. run? Do they, because there's one county range that I've shot at before that blew my mind. They have all the targets in a line at the end and then people stagger themselves where they shoot. No, this is, this is the targets are staggered. Stag- okay. 
and the line is all the same. That that's super dangerous. It, just, it was crazy. I was like, you got a guy shooting twenty yards, but then a guy back here shooting sixty. So that that that's interesting. You say that because on, on this range that I'm talking about, there was a couple younger guys, maybe you know, college kids or whatever, or high school, like younger, you know, younger guys, mm -hmm. and they were shooting down on the ten and the twenty range, and I was down on the forty and the fifty, and I was shooting and. All of a sudden, I just see him out of the corner of my eye walking to go get their arrows. And I mean, it's kind of an unwritten, and it probably is written, actually. <laughs> I just hadn't read the rules. <laughs> sure you wait somewhere. until everybody kind of, you look down the line and everybody's like, hey, are we good? Yeah. And everybody walks down the line and gets their arrows and come back to the to the start. Yeah. But they were just going, uh, and I think they thought that they were far enough away. And I get that in principle, and they probably were, but it's just not still. a safe practice. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna get out of here. And so I went back to my house and shot, you know, 20, 30. And then if I'm in my neighbor's driveway and nobody's outside, mm -hmm. I'll shoot 40. Sure. You know, but it's just like <sighs> anything can happen. So for like, sure. Like someone can forget, like not put the arrow on the rest, or yeah. they pull back too far, and for some reason the arrow comes off the rest yeah. i've had my shoulder i dislocated my shoulder a long time ago and i remember shooting one time and i came to full draw and just like opened myself up too much and whatever that was tweaked my shoulder and it came out of the socket while i'm holding the bow yeah and so everything lurched forward the arrow like i fired i don't know just in that process the the trigger on the release tripped yeah i don't know where the arrow went but had I been on a range with other people around and, and maybe yeah. there was someone down range, I don't know. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, even last night I was shooting and the kids were in the in my driveway playing and it's safe, but I was like, hey guys, I'm going to step back to 40. Just get behind me while I'm, I just need to shoot a couple rounds. So they, just, I see them running away screaming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they actually, we, we this weekend went down to my mom and dad's and shot their bows and they, they're into it. Which I'm That's very cool. thankful for. Yeah. And Cam's a fourth grader now, so he can join NASP. Mm, um, sure. And, but I don't think that's tell. That's a kind of winter deal, I think. Mm. Um, so anyways, we're, we're just kind of practicing together. So I've enjoyed that. That's and cool. Cam's been really talking it up about how he's going to go to dad and shoot a yeah. big buck, This, which <laughs> is fun for dad to get to, you know, hear that from him. So anyways, it just, but the point <laughs> is, is like, you can never be too safe. And... You know, even I mentioned in the last podcast, like, you know, when I accidentally, I was trying to figure out oh, what was going yeah. on my peep site and then I accidentally the shot four feet to the left. Like mm. anything can happen. That's never happened to me. Doesn't mean it can't happen. So I don't know. I, I was shooting with, with my buddy Daryl one time and he owned, he's owned multiple bow shops. Like, and he was a, a factory shooter for Matthews for a while. Um, and the first arrow out of, was shooting in his backyard 20 yards and the first shot out of his bow went high. And I don't know if we ever found the arrow, but he had his his pin set at 70 uh, and just yeah. didn't, didn't just, think about it. And, or, or you hear of guys that have been shooting for years and literally forget to knock an arrow, come to full draw, shoot, and their bow blows yeah. up. So anyhow. Be careful out there, folks. I did finally get, I got a brand new HHA that they're coming out with this year that I guess they're going to re release around the time Matthews does. And uh, so I had switched that sight out for the cell cut. Mm. And so I finally got the sight tape on it because I got my new arrows um, for victory. I had to send them to Randy over at TAC. He put okay. those 2.75 inch TAC drivers on them. Mm -hmm. So I finally got all that Friday. So this weekend it was like, okay, now I can find, I got everything, mods, peep, Sight until you decide to change paper something. tuned it so well now new arrows so now I, I could finally get the setup tape go from setup tape to sight <clears throat> tape so I did that this weekend and and that alone makes me feel better that I've just I got past that step you're already ahead of last season <laughs> yeah no shit so well I'm gonna get a new bow here in about three two weeks so I'll have to do it all over again but <sighs> it's whatever I'm for the cell count at least my set sight tapes in and mm -hmm. now I can practice and you know, and be confident in the, the distances. So yeah. anyways, I got, I got a few more minutes. So let's jump into the, the shenanigans of the show and we'll peace out. Let's do All right. That. So we got the question of the day. The question of the day uh, is brought to you by pH outdoors. Make all your food plotting jobs easier with the pH G series. No till drill. I will say that uh, 
I'm going to have to replant <laughs> the, the food plot that so hot. So dude, it right just, now. I, I don't know why I let people talk me into planting. I know better <laughs> Who did that I, I, everyone uh -huh. because it was a week of rain in early August. And I was like, I'm getting my plots in. Even dad's like, well, Mark always gets his plots in and I wait. And then I wish I did. And so this time I am. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. here I go. Well, they all can water. <laughs> I cannot. So, I pretty much just got to replant rat farts. Yeah, yeah. So another dead field of nothing. <laughs> Dirt patch. <laughs> Kill my dreams yet again. Uh, so, all right. This one's from Apple podcast from Gus. Uh, Steedham. Steedham hmm. says, Hey guys, love the podcast with the equal amounts of information and comedic relief. Uh, at the end of the, of August, my wife and I will be acquiring 40 acres. It's mostly wooded, but does have, have two ponds and a three to five acre field and CRP. Do you think it would be best to leave it as is this season or try and put in a fall food plot? Um, there's definitely time to put in a food plot. Like, even though we were talking, you know, it's the end of August, it was so hot. You really still have all of September to figure out what you want to do. If you wanted to plant something like uh, buck forage oats or wheat or winter wheat or rye, anything like that, you can still do it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're if you're really wanting to, there's plenty of time to go kill it with chemical and then you know mow it and you know do whatever you need to do. Yeah, and I don't think there's, there's any harm in it. I mean, unless you're going to do some kind of great disturbance, I I just don't see a real downside. Um, what I would say is by, since they just got it, the only thing is like, you may not exactly know what the deer movement really is just yet. There is something to be said to kind of understanding and knowing what, where the deer are naturally going or where they're bedded. If you have a good idea where that is already, you know, if you could tuck some sort of food source close to that bedding, mm -hmm. um, then I'd say go for it. Yep. Even if it was a half acre, you'd be shocked what you know, quarter acre will do just some sort Something. of green food source when there's nothing else available. And I don't know, obviously what's around them, but, sure. um, I, I mean, I'd go for it. Heck yeah, do it. So good luck and congratulations on the farm. It's a big deal. Yeah. 40 acres, man. That's cool. Wildlife word this week is brought to you by cold steel. Check out the full line of cold steel hunting knives and accessories at coldsteel.com. Are you an everyday carry kind of mm, no. knife guy? I got a billion knives in my truck. <laughs> like I have a lot of knives, replaceable blade, fixed blade, pocket knives. I don't know why, but they do come in handy when you're at the farm. Yeah. But no, I'm not an everyday carry guy. I don't find myself in scenarios where I, I'm not on the farm a lot. I'm not out there doing stuff where it'd be handy to have a knife real yeah. quick. My, my thing is I'm not a confident person. So I like having a weapon that I can intimidate people with. Mm. I draw it a lot. I saw that uh, big knife. Wave it around. The cold people. Steel, that machete for a yeah, How about that? The Espada? <laughs> they call it a pocket sword. Yeah, it is. And it is. <laughs> Is that a pocket sword? Or are you happy to see me? <laughs> uh, it is a pocket sword. Ah. I'm not happy to see you. <clears throat> I know that. I carry the verdict by yeah. Cold Steel if anyone cares. Yeah. So, do you care? No. Oh, let's crap. move on. <laughs> <laughs> What's an extra point originating from the base of a deer's antlers, sometimes pointed rear rearward, or in an abnormal direction? Is it a a basal snag, b a thumbbuster, c trash? <laughs> or D, purling. Okay, well, we call it trash, typically. Like, he's got some trash at his bases, or he's got a flyer, or, you know, Junk something like in the that. Um, I, I'm going to call the purling. I have no idea. Okay. Um, it is called a basal Damn snag. It. I almost a. went with that, but I thought, no way. <laughs> but I think you can make a case for A and C. Most, most guys are going to call that trash. Yeah. Trash yeah. in a good way. Yeah. I like trash. Yeah, it adds up. Mm. I, I wish every deer had trash. Yep. <laughs> Take that 130 to 140. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of times when you kill a deer like that, it's still got like scrapings of whatever tree they were oh, rubbing yeah. on. Like that, that kind of stuff is cool. I got a deer on one of the leases this year that is kind of the target so far. Mm -hmm. And he's a nice buck and he's got some trash at his bases. He's a mainframe. I think he's a mainframe 10, if I remember right. But um, split, oh, he's mainframe eight, but he's got split G2s and he's got trash on the base. And mm -hmm. it's just like, I mean, I, all the trash you can, 
get you can take because that's how like all those big deer that Mark and Terry kill, the guys kill yeah. almost always. It's got that non-typical kind of trash that adds. I love that. You know, it's like, Oh, he had mm-hmm. 18 extra inches of trash. It's like, hell yeah, man. Yeah. I've never really ha- encountered that. Yeah. So. The guys are like, well, actually those are deductions. It's like, yeah. uh, those guys suck. It's, it's cool, <laughs> man. It's, it just makes the deer that much more unique. Yeah. Don't bash our dreams, sir. Yeah. Don't bash our trash. All right. Yeah. Nice. Just made it up. Yeah. Actually, I was practicing since last night. And if you touch my drums, I will stab you in the neck with a, a knife. Cold steel knife. That's right. <laughs> Sword <laughs> knife. <laughs> do, do, do. All right. So we got some new, uh, we need shout outs, first of all. Although it looks like the question of the day was actually a shout out as well. So we're going to count that from Gus as, Let's. as two. But we do need some more shout outs. So go to your favorite, uh, wherever you listen to the podcast or view it and leave us a shout out and we'll read it. All right. So we got some new rack pack members, Facebook, private Facebook group. It's the hundred percent wild rack pack. Um, always. And there's been a lot of new ones recently. It's that time of year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I read the names. I butcher the names. There's a fake name. I have to find it. I got, Ooh, I got one minute left. All right. We got Hunter Longmire. That sounds fake. I like it. Dustin Bailey. Dustin, is that a girl? Is it a guy? We'll never know. Keith Wilburn. Paul Horst. Justin Barry Adams. Justin Adams. That's hmm. the, yeah. JBA. That's the, that's the country singer. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. He was, uh, he's a good dude. All right. Chase Greenlee. Rick O'Shea. I like that. Sean Domas. Domacek. Domacek. Kent Burgess, Eric Orr, Lane Fricken. I'm going to say with Lane mm. Ficken. Lane Ficken. Lane, I said Fricken. It's Ficken. Give me the Fricken L- chicken. Lane Ficken. Jordan Rednauer. Jordan? Producer Jordan? Jordan. Welcome aboard, buddy. <laughs> okay. So, fake name. I'm going with Lane. We don't know who the fake name is. I know who it is. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Chase R- Greenlee. I don't know. Who is it? Rick O'Shea. Ah, God dang it. <laughs> That was a great one. That was a good one. Yeah. Nice All job, right. Jimmy. All right. Well, that's it for the show. I got a chiropractor appointment because uh, God, you couldn't old. get any sexier. <laughs> get, I got a sciatica and, problem. I, listen to me. If I go listen on this elk trip with this back like the way it is right now, I'm going to regret life. So you could ask the guys to like massage your back. I've been trying to fix this neck and back problem for the last six months and uh, it's not going away so finally i had to break down i could almost not walk last weekend so that will be a problem yeah i was like shit man i gotta go to the chiropractor so yeah. I'm, right. I'm getting it fixed him don't worry about me I, i'll worry all right that's enough podcast if there's any uh deer cast questions tim's your man i can help you too <laughs> yeah you know a thing or two about deer cast but if you got them, let us know. Hit us up in the rack pack. Heck we'll yeah. be happy to answer them. Heck yeah. All, All right. right, guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Peace out. Take land management to the next level with DeerCast's exclusive virtual rain gauges. Pinpoint accuracy and historical data, all powered by industry-leading ag weather services. DeerCast has the tools to keep you ahead of your game. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by DeerCast Maps. Waypoints, weather, virtual rain gauges, and more. Every tool you need to get ahead of your game.